Hey YouTube, coming at you with a uh, uh, Galar Cup greatly team that I put together. So Umbreon, Frostlass, Ninetales. So I wanted to use Frostlass because it is, whoa, what was that? Sorry. Uh, one of the best safe swaps just in general. Anytime there's a limited cup, there was always a couple Pokemon that rose to the top. Um, Vigorath was one, which is not around anymore because it got nerfed into the ground. But Frostlass was another one. Frostlass is just, um, with the Powder Snow, it was just always fast on the charge to get to Avalanche, Shadow Ball, those hits so hard. Um, in terms of like answers to it, you have like Fire and Dark, which against both of those, you can still kind of hit pretty hard with Avalanche, Shadow Ball. So it was like, a good Pokemon. I uh, also wanted to use Umbreon because it is just very tanky. And then I ended up going with Ninetales because I felt just good about it and know how to use it. There was, I started with Psychic Onyx. I thought like there's so many poisons in this meta. And then, um... I got hit with like a couple like mandibuds and I'm like, oh yeah, I have nothing from beyond. And then Frostless is just gonna, you hit super effective, but you're just gonna get opaced with the dark pulses and stuff. Um, And yeah, so it was just not good. So I had to put last resort on. So I did okay with this. I think there's like Drapion, any, any like sort of darks are still kind of problems. Drapion, uh, mandibuds, they were all sort of problems for this team. So maybe you wanna like switch the Umbreon into something else. Frostless and Ninetales is fine. You just need something like, bulky on the lead you're gonna see multiple times that i only get great throws that is because the game just stuttered and stuttered and stuttered so a lot of that leg came through again today um which just like cost me some like just raw damage right because if you only get a great because the game just stops on you you're only doing 75 percent of what the what that foul play should do so it's really frustrating um when you're trying to like <laughs> play this game and you just get stuck with those issues. So what probably should have been taken out by now. Because I had only two greats on my throws on the d d d on the foul plays. Puts me down to the 1 HP. So it looks like I'll still take switch. But it just, it's just frustrating. Okay. Outcome Sableye. So Frostlass obviously has a terrible matchup. So we have to come Ninetales. Um, this is already like a neutral matchup at best. So being one behind on a claw. Probably does not put you in a great situation even in the two shields. So what I'm probably going to do is just double shield, try and grab both shields on their end, and put this low enough that I can hopefully just powder snow down. But again, really tough to do when the game just keeps lagging. I am... My workplace is a mess here. Um, sorry. So that's why I'm just banging stuff and it's all falling off. I got a full table of stuff here. Um... So yeah, they will get to the third move before I do, which is fine because now I can just powder snow down and it is a bomb of snow in the back. So this is where just uh, knowing how to over farm and when to over farm is how you do this. So they'll get an energy ball to non shadow. So I'm not too worried about it, uh, but I do not want to take a weather ball. So I will throw right before they get to the weather ball. Um, so I have a ton of energy, take it out. And now I'm only one away from an avalanche, and that is how you over farm uh, to make sure you come up with energy to win this matchup. Okay, Frostlass lead. So this is a good lead. I actually have like two answers plus a mirror match, so I, not, I don't need to rush out of here. They come in with uh, Weezing, so Ninetales is a pretty good answer because their overheat or play rough, whatever one they're running, is going to be resisted. So they can only throw Brutal Swings. I think with Brutal Swing is it. It does come pretty fast and chips an okay amount on nine tails, right? So they've already thrown two. If they throw another one, I'll have to shield. Get the weather ball off. They do shield, so that's fine. Um, I go back to back here. And this is one where if they shield, I don't need to shield back here. I could just commit to like, let this go, commit to the farm down on frost last. Probably shield up one brutal swing. Um, hope it's only one and like take it out and then come out with some energy and a shield that would be like my deal here because they have frost last on the front nah, I do get hit with a brutal swing so I have to commit to that's okay I still have Umbreon and frost last loaded for their frost last. so their frost last is useless they may just come in and like sacrifice it take a shadow ball yeah so I'm gonna try and farm up a little bit and I was like aware that they may try and catch so I just kind of held off uh, again, Umbreon was running Psychic at the time, so I did not um, want to catch there. So take this Obstagoon out. What I was going to do is farm up a bit and then catch. 
but they kind of know with a with a mirror match plus an Umbreon that they're in trouble. So bad lead, straight nine tails, which is very very risky. Like they have a Diggersby as an answer. Don't do that. Like the only problem was it, it wasn't a great matchup for my Frostlass. That doesn't matter. You still need to come that Frostlass anyways because you can't come. This is a, such a hard answer too. Their Nine Tails, of course, they're going to have a ground or a water type Pokemon in the back to deal with this. Uh, the good news is, it's not like fire is resisted by ground, so I'm still hitting neutral. And these fire spins and weather balls are adding up. So let's see if I try to commit the shield and take it or just let it go. I do just let it go. Now coming to get a couple. Yeah, get four ahead with Frostlass, because again, Frostlass with energy is pretty deadly. And the Drapion's a back trough. Like powder, pat, the um, Poison Sting is resisted, but it's just so fast charging. So only five to a crunch, which causes you problems. So I'm going to try and catch that, catch that crunch, uh, but does not happen. They are running Powder Snow A9, and that was really fast. So that's not a... Um, that is not a Dazzling Gleam. I think they may be running Psy Shock because they've kind of threw fast multiple times. I think you have to at least fake it that you don't have Psyshock and you have Dazzling Gleam to at least threaten me. Um, but yeah, they're just going back to back here. But now the problem is, um, I will take this out or grab a shield. How much health does the Drapion have left? Okay, should just be farmed down range here. One crunch from it, Poison Sting is resisted, but one crunch from a Shadow Drapion does take out here, as you're going to see. Luckily, I was able to get them to like 2 HP that I can outsnarl before they take me out here. So I do end up winning that. But yeah, between all the Drapions, like this is what I thought, like Toxapex and Weezing and stuff like that. Psychic will be great. Um, but in the ending, I just got hit with Umbreon, Mandibuzz, Obstagoon, Sableyes. <laughs> it's just like, uh, I mean, Sableyes not bad. You can just throw Power Play, but like, a lot of Drapions, like just so many dark Pokemon when I was running Umbreon. So I had to switch last resort onto it. So I have the overheat, but I am going to bait here. Cause this is one of the things where it's like, even if, the, even if they let the bait go, this will do so much chip that I could like just go with the weather ball. So now I can match and go even shields and get to an overheat and grab a second shield or hopefully just one shot. Uh, and they end up shielding this, if I remember, which is kind of frustrating. But who double shields an Umbreon? But apparently they do. So that is okay. But now, again, Umbreon is tough. Maybe I'll try and catch. No. I'm just going to try and take this out. Yeah, I'll just try and take this out here. Have a bit of energy. They're going to come Tox Pex, so I just instant catch here. Catch a Brine, so that's nice. And now we're in a match where I have absolutely no move. So after this and after I saw all those darks that you saw is when I was like, nah, we're just going to put Last Resort on here. So we'll play through this very, very, very boring matchup. Uh, I may go back to the open. Not I. I mean, I kind of like not seeing for alligators and Claude sires on every single team. But uh, you know, I don't like. I think people are just getting bored of this already. So I, I want to like showcase things that you guys are actually playing. They're going very, very boring match. And am I multitasking here? You sh I sure am. As I will eventually be taken out. So Darks is a problem for this team. Um, I would probably personally replace Umbreon and try like a different Pokemon. Okay, Glade is okay. I do take a 
Um, close combat here. And they eventually get into nine tails, which perfect. I can just punish with my nine tails. Uh, just commit to doesn't gleam does hurt here, but I will just commit to the farm down. Uh, here, so I come out with some overheats, or at least one overheat. But if if the galay comes in, I think I just go back to back weather ball, because thinking that maybe they'll shield, or maybe they won't shield. No, I want them to shield. Maybe they will shield, and just I can get like multiple moves off. But they'll let the first one go. So I, I can't go back to back. But maybe they'll just sacrifice us and try and just run with, with it, what's in the back. They don't. So then I snipe. So now they're settling down two shields that they shield this. Um, and then they like miscount it or... Yeah. Because then I get a third one off and you take it out. So just very easy take out here. And then with the two shield, Clefable or not, I can kind of handle what's left on this team with Frostlast. Try to just get that chip damage off here. I think I come Frostlast one and catch. Frostlast let them, yeah. Frostlast tr let them figure out what's out there before they make the move and then catch there and it's a Meteor Mash. So Meteor Mash would actually really hurt a Frostlast. Um, and they catch right back on me. So nice catch on them. But this is actually kind of good because now all this Glade goes down with all this energy because they caught on it. And now I just shield and commit to the, the farm down for the rest of the time here. Gudra, yeah, you just stay in and play this matchup out. So how's your weekend going? I think those will probably go up Sunday. How's your community day? I assume we'll see some of those. Leveny, I think, or Leveny, or however you pronounce it. I'm sure those bunch of videos are out from content creators talking about how this thing is so glass cannony and stuff. So we'll see that. Um, how many? How many? What's going on here? Seven minutes. Okay. I think the battles are pretty, <laughs> it's interesting. It happens about here, every video on that I do. Um, there's like six minutes of battles left here. And this is about the time where I'm like, I start to go. Cause I explained how many battles have I, cause I do like 10 battles. And when you're at like six minutes left, then there's like maybe like three-ish or four battles left and then so I've already like gone through six and honest I think for like the most part I don't mind I I can go through every single battle but I think unless it's like some team that I just like dominate with or if it's a team that like you really need to explain different matchups you can this one's pretty straightforward. Um, it's not like it's a balanced team or anything. But it's just kind of like three Pokemon put together that I think are strong. Um, if I see a, basically if I see a fighter or a fairy, I should get out into Frostlass. Otherwise, I'm staying in with pretty much everything else. You are doubly to rock in the back. There's like no rock in this cup here, so I'm not worried about that. Um. What I do want to check is what is coming up. Uh, if there's anything else worth talking about. Already talked about that, talked about that. There's a mega mawa 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 day. Um, so a new mega, if you're interested in that, I guess I could talk about that for the Friday. That's a good bit video to bank for Thanksgiving weekend. I could do that even though it's not like at Manuel and GBL. There's a takeover event, October 8th. 
where you can TM away. So Monday afternoon, okay. Rocket takeover. New Shadow Pokemon. Okay, perfect. I could talk about that on Monday. New Shadow Pokemon for the Rocket Takeover event. Um, Caterpie, Mankey, Rug and Rolla, Venipede, Kiriblast, and Shelmet. With some different shadows and raids. Machop, Grimer, Execute, Pseudo Widow in the great in the one star, and then Pinsir, Sableye, Mawel in the three. So that'll be a good actually video just to look through different Pokemon. Let me know if you want what other different videos you want. Because I saw, actually, let's talk about comments here. Because I saw a couple comments that stood out to me. Um, the first one, the first one was, um, I want a, where's the comment? So there's one that says play the Go Wild Global event in late November to max out a Palkia and a Dialga for Master League and you can expand your channel by playing Master League as well as vlog and event meets and keep them PvP related to differentiate yourself from others. Um, so two things there. One, I haven't even looked at what the Go Wild event is in November. That seems so far away. My man, we just hit August. We just hit October. I cannot even think about November yet. Um, two, doesn't matter. I get what you're saying that I can expand the channel with more Master League play because there, there is sort of like a difference in the people who watch Great League versus those who watch Ultra League and Master League. So I, I, I do think there is like a niche there of people who want to watch Master League that it's just not available. The problem is as you've as I mentioned before and I've shown before, Ultra League and Master League get half the views. And I don't know if that's just my audience um, are just mostly Great League focused. So I don't have a lot of Ultra League and Master League people. I know I have some for sure, like Alfie's mullet here in Ottawa. He loves Ultra League and Master League. Um, but I don't know if that's just a, a my channel thing or if that's like a global GBL thing where people just don't want to watch Master League as much. Because I see other channels, same thing. They struggle for Master League content. Not that they have they have the Pokemon, but they just don't get the views. Um, so I don't know about that. The the, the vlogs and event meetups. Um, so I enjoyed when I was in New York. I did vlog a lot. I think where I like. So I'm not a good vlogger. Like. Getting behind this camera and just talking to you here versus like vlogging and showing your game footage and trying to trying to like talk while actually doing a something and it's very is a very different look and feel. Um and I don't think I'm good at it. That being said, I don't mind trying to do more of those. I think there's two problems. Um vlogs and events meetups. The first is just timing. Um, you know, Zoe, Daxi, all these people where you see the vlogs of these events, Brandon Tan, they do this for a living, right? So they're doing these events basically 10 a.m. When the, whenever it turns over, like 10 a.m. the day it drops, they're out there playing and then sh showcasing the video that night. I got a real job. Not, not that this isn't a real job because they I'm sure they make good money, but um, I got a real desk job <laughs> with real nine to five hours that I need to go do. So I, I can't go out and sort of vlog these events unless they're like even a weekend. I don't, I don't go out like my my weekends are packed because I got to like watch the kids. Kids got swimming and dance class and stuff like that. And then. I still got to put out two videos a day. So I just don't, like, I don't go out and event or vlog. Event meetups. I talked about the Toronto Regional in my other video two days ago. So you can go listen to my thoughts on the Toronto Regional. Someone said the price was down, which is important. That actually may change my, a little, it may change it a little bit depending on how much it's down. Because last year it was like 
110 120 dollars entry fee which was insane so if they brought it down to like 70 dollars maybe i would go um but again for the most part i still need to drive there and gas and time and it's still gonna be complicated um but it but if the event actual price is down that was the other one if the event price is down i will actually consider going um because i have this i haven't implemented it yet but what i think would actually be really good on this channel is a lot of you talked about how you just like me talking and vlog style like podcast style things a lot of you say you don't even watch my videos you just have me on in the background or just listen to my voice i had thought that it would be cool having seen pokedaxi do some interviews with like brandon tan and zoe i thought it would be cool if i did that with like gbl content creators have like maybe like once every week once every two weeks have these different creators on twitch and youtube and do just like a half an hour 45 minute like um like vlog chat not vlog like a podcast type style interview just discussing everything from the state of gbl to their channel to just stuff like that so i think because i think it'd be cool to like cross promotion i'd be i think it'd be cool just like get other people like because you get my view on things but i come at it from a 37 year old dad who basically is a part-time pokemon go player at best Whereas other content creators are like full-time content creators. Um, other people are just full, like do travel for all these regionals. So I think it'd be cool just getting different perspectives, but I have done zero research into one, the sort of setup I would need, like how I would, like what um, system I would use, or I don't even know what the right word is, what not like a zoom thing or just, yeah, just like what functionality, um, platform platform is the word I'm looking for. What platform I would use to do that. Um, I haven't reached out to any content creators or anything to see if they want to even be interested in it. Then I would need to find time for all these things. And again, I'm already like, I'm, I'm having trouble. Like, I'm going to be honest. I'm having trouble keeping up with these two videos a day. I'm doing it just for consistency sake. And, um, Again, the helps with views, helps with revenue, helps with getting my name out there. Just there's so many things that are positive for doing two a day, but I'm having a tough time keeping it up. So I, and I understand that would replace uh, like a video. So it there, but it's just like trying to figure out all the logistics. So um, if anyone has done this, because I know there's a lot of content creators who comment on my videos, because. Um, who just commented today on my video yeah jamie finn finn or fine uh anyways he just commented on my video i know callum comments on my video constantly um and there's a couple other content creators that i know watch me as well if you content creators or not even you if anyone knows um some of these like platforms or ways to maybe need to talk to home sites because I've, I've seen like home slice and others do like duo um duo uh what's it called like uh battles where you have they have like both players and both of their um phones on the screen so i'm sure he knows how to do it i think that'd be interesting i think i'm i think i can be good enough to like Again, this is just more like my analytical brain. Like, I think I can like think of good questions and and just talk a lot. Not talk a lot, but I think I can ask like good questions and respond well. As a host, I'm so I watch the late night. Okay, we're just getting. I was gonna say we're just getting into random now, but isn't that how all these videos go? Um, but there's late night talk show hosts on TV here, and there's like. Um, Jimmy Fallon, who's just like props up all his guests and makes them feel like they're the funniest and smartest person in the world. And then there's Jimmy Kimmel who, um, treats everyone like they're his best friend, like buddy, buddy. He seems to be friends with like all of the Hollywood people. 
And then there's Stephen Colbert, Stephen Colbert, Colbert, um, where he is like so intelligent and smart, and he's like one of the best, better like interviewers. But he interviews like it would be like a like a like a news interview, right? Um, but he's like smart and he's like quick wit and stuff like that. So I I I, tr- I feel like I'd be more like him. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know how it would go off. I don't know how I'd actually like, I've got an idea of how it would work, but I don't actually know how it work in practice. Anyways, those are just my thoughts. Does any of that sound good to you guys? <laughs> Does anything work or not work there? Let me know. I'm going to stop talking. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a good weekend. I'll see you guys in the next one.